we look into the process of gas exchange and gas transport eh? okay so gas exchange so oxygen in inhaled air dissolved in a film of moisture on the epithelial cell okay so the diffusion of oxygen okay so this is the pathway of oxygen diffusion okay so they will diffuse across the epithelial cell across the epithelium and into the blood capillaries here. so this is diffusion of oxygen so they will move okay to the pulmonary vein okay where they will enter the heart whereas carbon dioxide diffuse in the opposite way from the blood capillaries here okay across the epithelium Okay, of the alveolus and into the air space of the alveolus here. Okay, out of the body as exhale air. So this is a pathway of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the alveolar air and the body capillaries are separated by only two cell layers. Okay, so the distance between the air and the blood is about 0 0.5 to 1.5 micrometers. So the short distance or allows rapid diffusion of gases. So this is indicated by the decreasing of D, eh? okay, which is lower D, higher is the rate of diffusion. So this is the uh, lungs, eh? you have type 1 cell of the alveolar wall so this type 1 is thin okay and flat squamous epithelial which has high surface area okay so this increases the uh, gas diffusion okay and this type 1 cell involved in gas exchange between the alveoli and the blood yeah? okay so and then we have the, another one is type 2 which is surfactant secreting cells. So this is a cuboidal type. Okay, they do not have a smart surface area as type one. Okay, but they function in secreting this called surfactant or pulmonary surfactant. Yes, one. So this pulmonary surfactant is a fatty substances that helps to reduce alveolar surface tension. Okay. So they are released via exocytosis. Okay, so without this surfactant, this will cause the alveoli to collapse. Okay, that's why you have this type two, which is also play a role in the uh, lungs. Yeah? Okay, so continue on gas exchange between the alveoli and the blood capillaries. Okay, so each alveolus serves as a tiny depot from which oxygen is loaded into the blood by capillaries. Yeah? On gas exchange, okay, as I explained in the earlier in the fixed uh, diffusion, fixed law, okay, so the differences in concentration is to what drive the movement of gases across the alveoli into the blood and vice versa for carbon dioxide so for oxygen okay the higher concentration of oxygen and alveoli compared to the pulmonary capillaries causes oxygen to move out into the blood vessels into the capillaries while carbon dioxide which is high in the blood vessels okay we move out down its gradient into the alveoli okay so they move depending on the concentration so we look at gas exchange in the tissues okay so oxygen is more concentrated in the blood than in the body cells Okay, so the differences uh, in concentration gradient uh, cause them to diffuse out of the capillaries and into the cells. You see here, 
this is the oxygen gas indicated by the purple arrow here so the blood has higher oxygen compared to the tissue cells cause oxygen to move into the tissue cells whereas carbon dioxide indicated by the black arrow here okay is more concentrated in the cells will move out of the cell and into the blood to be transported back to the lungs to be excreted out of the body okay so now we look into transport of gases or in this case oxygen gases so oxygen gases is transported by hemoglobin so hemoglobin is a protein composed of four polypeptide chain and four organic compound called the heme group so this is the heme group okay so we have four heme group okay so this four heme group is located on four polypeptide chain yeah? so you've learned this in the chapter okay on chapter one on macromolecule or semester one okay on the structure of hemoglobin okay so at the center of each heme group we have this called atoms of iron okay which can bind to molecules of oxygen so this is how oxygen gases is transported which is via the hemoglobin okay so now we look at the lungs okay differences in partial pressure that we said earlier okay due to differences in partial pressure between the alveolus and the blood capillaries hemoglobin in the blood will load up with oxygen forming oxyhemoglobin okay so differences in partial pressure in the alveolus here so this is the alveolus we have, this is the partial pressure for oxygen okay this is the partial pressure for the blood yeah? so you see here the blood okay they move down from 160 millimeter mercury down into the 104 so they will fill up the hemoglobin with oxy hemoglobin which is oxygen in the body tissues here we have lower partial pressure for oxygen okay therefore oxygen is unloaded into the body tissues so the oxyhemoglobin releases oxygen forming the oxyhemoglobin so you can refer this diagram in that page 1021 uh, in the Campbell book eh, biology eh? so this is how gases are moving well, move about okay we have oxygen here okay the partial pressure differences okay the loading and unloading of gases so from 100 millimeter mercury at the alveolus down into bloodstream the tissues okay which is lower causing them to go down so therefore once it go down the gradient of oxygen partial pressure it will be circulated back and then will be move from 100 back to 40 so they will keep increasing or reloading back the pressure of these gases same concept for carbon dioxide okay the high concentration of carbon dioxide in tissues compared to the alveolus okay cause the carbon dioxide from tissues to move into the blood okay and be transported back into the alveolus where they are Excreted. So you see 46 mercury down to 40. Eh? So they will move down and go back up into the alveolus. So the key point here is always down the gradient of partial pressure. Okay, so now we look into the transport of carbon dioxide.
Okay, so carbon dioxide is transported in the bloodstream in three form. Okay, so the first form, which is the lowest, which is they are dissolved in the blood plasma, which is about 7 to 10 percent of carbon dioxide. So they are dissolved in this core plasma. So the other 20 percent will bind to hemoglobin. Okay, so you see here, so oxygen, carbon dioxide, okay, enters the hemoglobin, they binds, okay, and upload CO2 and proton or hydrogen ion. And the majority of carbon dioxide is transported via bicarbonate ion, you see here. So carbon dioxide, okay, from carbonic acids with the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, which later dissociate into bicarbonate ion and H plus ion or proton. So this bicarbonate ion, which is about 72%, together with the other gases will be transported into the lungs. Okay. So after that, from the lungs, okay, they will move. Okay, if they will move. So the bicarbonate ion, okay, we got carbonic acid. So they will release the carbon dioxide required. Same for plasma. So plasma releases their CO2. Okay, the same for hemoglobin will release their CO2. Okay, so they are transported to the alveoli where they are excreted out. 